Here we're gonna look at a nice solution to a viewer suggested problem. So this problem is from the Polish Math Olympiad. I think it's one of the regional levels from 2017. If you guys wanna suggest problems, you can post them in the comments or find my email somewhere, but I will admit that I don't always get a chance to read all of the comments or even read all of my emails because I'm quite busy with um, other stuff at the moment. But from time to time, I happen upon a problem that a viewer suggests and I like to work it out. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the statement. So we wanna prove that for every odd prime P, so let's maybe go ahead and put that in here, there is exactly one natural number N, so by natural number I mean positive integer, such that N squared plus NP is a perfect square. Okay, so before we get into the solution, I wanna look at a couple of hints. So maybe my first hint is to loosen this primeness requirement and find a nice solution. So in other words, instead of looking at primes, maybe look at all odd numbers, for instance, because here we're talking about odd primes, and so that would be loosening that a little bit. Then my next uh, hint is to go back and find out why is this solution unique when you have a prime and not just an odd number. And I should say maybe the first thing to do before you even do this is to make a big chart of values of n and values of t p to get an idea for what's going on in the first place. Okay, so maybe get this problem and go with these hints and we'll come back with a solution. So hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're gonna look at a solution. And we're gonna look for like a bigger solution at first where P is any odd number and maybe try to simplify that down to our unique case when P is a prime. So I wanna start off with a chart with the values P, N, and then N squared plus NP, but not all the values, just the values that give us a perfect square in this right-hand column. And like I said before, I'm taking P to be an odd number, not just just prime numbers here. So let's go ahead and do 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17 down the column of the P. So those are some odd numbers. And then what N values will correspond to these choices, making this a perfect square over here? Well, we'll have 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and 64. So I think it's pretty easy to see the structure. Notice we've got cons consecutive odd numbers here and consecutive square numbers here. And then furthermore, by the calculation, we can find this right-hand column and we'll see that we have two squared, six squared is here, 12 squared is here, 20 squared is here, 30 squared is here, 42 squared is here, 50, six squared is here and 72 squared is here. So from this, we can maybe get an idea for what's going on. Notice if I can write P as any odd number, so 2K plus one, notice that we can guess our value of N based off this value of P, this odd number. Notice this thing looks like one less than 2K plus one and then you take half of it and you square it. So notice 17 minus one is 16 Half of that is eight, squared is 64, that works. 15 minus one is 14, half of that is seven, squared is 49, so that works. So if I take one away from this and take half of it, I get K, I square it, I get K squared. Great, so now let's notice that if P equals 2K plus one and n equals k squared, then our combination over here, n squared plus np is a perfect square. And we can actually check that pretty easily. So we have n squared plus np, so we can write that as k to the fourth, because k squared squared is k to the fourth, plus k squared times 2k plus one. Again, using the fact that p is equal to 2k plus one. The next thing that I wanna do is factor k squared out of this whole thing, and notice that I'm left with k squared plus 2k plus one, but now notice that this k squared plus 2k plus one nicely factors. So here we have k squared, k plus one quantity squared, so here we have k times k plus one, and then all of that squared. So in other words, we have a perfect square. So let's see what we've got going on here. So if P is an odd prime, we have a, an N 
such that n squared plus np is a perfect square. So what is left to show is that this n is unique. So let's maybe go ahead and write that down. So left to show is that this n is unique. Because in fact, we didn't use the primeness of p at all. We just used the oddness of, pre of p at this point. So we'll probably have to use the primeness of p in order to prove the uniqueness of this n. Okay, I'll go ahead and clean up the board and then we will get to that. Okay, so we just argued that if p is an odd prime, we have a solution to this equation. In other words, the solution when n squared plus np is a perfect squared, but we only use the oddness of p in this case. We didn't use the primeness. So what's left is to show that if p is prime, then this is the solution. So let's maybe go ahead and suppose that we have more than one solution. So suppose that n1 and n2 in the natural numbers are such that we have n1 squared plus n1p equals x1 squared and n1 squared, sorry, n2 squared plus n2p equals x2 squared with x1 not equal to x2 and thus n1 also not equal to n2. So in other words, we've got a way of combining p in this fashion to get a perfect square two different ways. Now what I want to do is maybe use the quadratic formula to solve each of these for n and let's see what we get. So I'm just going to like jump through the steps of doing this. We don't really need to check that super carefully. So up here we'll have n1 equals negative p plus minus the square root of uh, p squared plus 4x1 squared all over 2. And then similarly over here, we'll have n2 equals negative p plus minus the square root of p squared plus 4x2 squared all over 2. Great. But since n1 and n2 are both natural numbers, so this is a natural number and this is a natural number, we know the stuff under the square root must be a perfect square itself. So in other words, here we have p squared plus 4x1 squared equals y1 squared. In other words, that stuff is a perfect square. And p squared plus 4x2 squared equals y2 squared. In other words, that stuff is also a perfect square. So let's maybe put an and here. And then since up here we have x1 not equal to x2, then we also have y1 not equal to y2. Okay, and now we just have to show why that is a problem regarding the primeness of p. So now we can take this one and rearrange it to write p squared equals y1 minus 2x1 times y1 plus 2x1. Just moving that 4x1 squared over and then doing a difference of squares factoring. Then similarly, we can do the same thing over here. I'll just like continue the equal sign on. So we'll have y2 minus 2x2 and then y2 plus 2x2. Good. But now since p is prime, we know that this factorization is either p times p or 1 times p. That's the only way that p squared can cancel. So let's maybe go ahead and put that up here. So this is either p times p or 1 times p. But we know that y1 minus 2x1 is not equal to y1 plus 2x1, given that x is not equal to 0. And similarly for y2 minus 2x2 and y2 plus 2x2. So that means it's impossible for this to be equal to p and this to be equal to p, and this to be equal to p and this to be equal to p. So that means that one of them is equal to 1 and one of them is equal to p. But since this guy is smaller than this guy, and furthermore, this guy is smaller than this guy. We see that this one must be equal to 1, and this one must be equal to p. So we have this is equal to 1, and this is equal to p. So in other words, we have y1 minus 2x1 equals y2 minus 2x2, and y1 plus 2x1 equals y2 plus 2x2. 
But now solving this system of equations, we get to the point where x1 equals x2, which contradicts this original assumption that we had two solutions. So now we have proven that if p is prime, this is the only solution. Because if we tried to get two solutions, we ended up with two of the same solution. And that's a good place to stop.